Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, so I worked for decades in the television, film, broadcast industry. I worked in professional audiovisual, teleconferencing, etc., etc. I have been around rack mounted equipment, ugly equipment, like very commercial grade, non consumer friendly equipment for a long time. I spent many a night in a data center and I know what industrial equipment looks like. And to me, what we're gonna look at today is definitely ugly. It is definitely not something that just looks cool to me. I don't like the industrial design of it, but it's very cool for a different reason. That's its functionality. What it does, is unlike anything else out there, it doesn't, nothing else does what this thing does as far as I can tell. And I've got a couple of very interesting tests that I want to see if this thing can pass and see if this thing can do. You're not gonna wanna miss this. If there's one thing that thrift stores in my area have a multitude of, it's DVD players. Now this is not a DVD player review. This unit uh, has the ability to play DVDs, but it's so much more than that. And we're really going to focus on the kind of what makes this unique. Uh, it's, a, it's a standalone karaoke machine, but even that isn't what we're here to review today. Something about this unit caught my eye in a significant way. First of all, speaking of catching my eye, it's ugly. I, don't, I mean, it looks like it's got a red LED display or LCD display. It just looks like industrial equipment. It looks like something that belongs in a rack. Not something that, you know, I would say, oh, this is cool. Something more so that would be annoying. Um, it looks like it's completely uh, driven with physical buttons. As you can see, there's a button for everything on this thing versus having it be, you know, software based or based into the code, something that's, you know, driven from the actual firmware. It seems like it has a button for everything. But again, that's not what we're here to look at today. This caught my eye for a couple of reasons. One is it's got an SD card slot and a, US, and a USB card slot, and it has a record capability. It's got microphone inputs. So we're gonna look at the back in a minute. But the reason why I would even cast a glance in the direction of a DVD player is because I've been on the lookout for one. You may be saying to yourself, Recordology, a DVD player, how much more boring can you get? And it can't be just any DVD player because I've got a very specific reason that I want to obtain or I wanted to obtain a new DVD player and it had to have a specific capability. And that has to do with the fact that I was recently gifted from a friend of mine in the UK, viewer of this channel and a good, good friend of mine, two DVDs that I want to watch. We've got Bola Quo here, this is Status Quo, the movie they did, and then we've got this movie Taken Over the Asylum. Both of these DVDs are Region 2 DVDs. Now here in the United States, our DVDs are encoded with Region 1 copyright protection coding uh, that basically means that you can't play anything but a Region 1 DVD player here in the States. Now you may be saying to yourself, how on earth could you possibly tell that? So on the back of your DVD, there will be a little symbol that means it's got a Region 1 coding on it, and the back of your DVD player will have that same symbol. That means that if you try putting a Region 2 disc into a Region 1 DVD player, then you're out of luck. It's not gonna play it. It, it knows you're trying to play it out of region because they're forcing different regions to adhere to different standards and they can control releases. So if a movie isn't released, say in the UK, uh, somebody from the US can't send a DVD ahead of time and, and let somebody there watch it if, it if it doesn't exist. Now, this isn't that difficult to overcome. You can walk into any store today and every DVD player you will find will be region one. You will not find a region free or a region two DVD player. However, if you go online, they're fairly easily obtainable. They're always made by brands that you've never heard of. For that reason, I've been looking for generic or off-brand DVD players when I go to the thrift store over the last couple of months so I can play these. And the way you tell, again, is by looking on the back and looking for that symbol 
And when I flip this around, here's what I saw. While we're back here, might as well look at the inputs and outputs. So um, we've got audio output, we've got uh, coaxial output, we've got an optical output, we've got component, composite, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And over here, you will see that there's no region one marking on it. There's no region one marking whatsoever. And that intrigues me. And I, as I film this, I still don't know if this is gonna work or not. We're just gonna try it out together, but there's no region one marking anywhere on here, which it would have. Now it's interesting, it is an FCC approved device. Again, it's made by Karaoke USA. Who is that? I have no idea. Uh, it's a DVD. It also plays CD plus graphics, MP3 plus graphics, which is kind of cool. We're not going to test that out today. Uh, oh yeah, I just have S video output as well. So yeah, that is the device. But my question is, is it going to let me play these region two DVDs, which I really want to be able to see these movies finally that my friend has sent me. And now there's software to do this as well. You can, uh, uh, get software that'll strip that off and you have to pay for it and stuff and, and I guess I had to pay for this too This is like $12 at the thrift store did come with a remote and I just I'm going all in on this I just want to see you know what we can uh, expect from this. I'm a little concerned Primarily because not because of the coding issue not because of the region 1 region 2 etc etc But these are probably PAL discs versus NTSC here in the States where NTSC other places like the UK they're PAL and that's not just a compatibility thing, but it even goes so far as to prescribe a chosen media's frame rate and resolutions and things like that. So if you have to have like a PAL monitor, a PAL player, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So with this being a PAL disc, a region two PAL disc, this may be region free, but can it read PAL discs? And, you know, the mo video monitor I'm going to connect, can it, you know, take a PAL signal? Or is it being converted by, you know, the device we're going to put in between? I don't know. So there's a lot of things up in the air right now. And this is just a show where we're going to experiment together. Let's look at the front panel of this. So this is the Karaoke USA DV102. Um, this is Heartland America kind of stuff. I mean, it's not mainstream uh sony uh equipment you know what i mean this is this is something else we got a couple of microphone jacks mechanical power switch we have the microphone volume control this is interesting we've got a key button here uh, i'm guessing that'll change the key of the media being played back this was designed to work with cds and dvds that had you know graphics capabilities discs that were designed to be truly uh karaoke discs i did notice this Saving this moment for the show. I'm not going to make it weird. We're just taking that off. <laughs> um, the transport controls up there. MPX. I don't know if, what that is. Is that, a, is that like a filter to filter out FM interference? I'm not 100% sure. We got the open close. We got the record stop. Recorded playback. Repeat. And then the uh, disk drives right there. Some navigation controls. So there will be some menu-based stuff on here as well. Let's start by just doing a basic functionality test. Let's play some music. Let's try to record onto the SD card and then we'll move on to the discs. Okay, so here goes nothing. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on now. And okay, I was worried for a second. There. Okay, it's not a red screen, it's a orange one. A little bit of a foggy glow, no disc in there. For the audio, I'm just gonna use my little portable Bluetooth speaker here. Auxiliary input in the back, cabled to the audio output. I'm gonna put this off screen kind of closer to the mic. And yeah, let's go ahead and open it up. It's a little dusty, no big surprise. Let's start by just playing a CD. I mean, let's see if it can do that. Hopefully it works, because I'm curious what our options are gonna be with this thing. So here goes a regular old CD. It doesn't say CD on it. But I'm guessing it probably works, okay. All right, so we've got our CD playing. And let's see what kind of things we can do here. Can we change the pitch on playback? No, this is the input select. No USB, no card, close, load. So there's three modes. So you must have to have a compatible 
disc to get that feature set. Uh, there's our transfer controls. Let's go ahead and skip forward a little bit. Let's try this MPX button. Sound is rough, by the way. It sounds very modulated. It sounds very like synthetic. Interesting. Yeah, the quality. That's really strange. Very, very strange. Okay, so I've got an SD card too. Let's put an SD card in here. Okay, if you can name the movie, I will be very impressed. Let me know down in the comments below. In fact, you know what? The first person to identify that movie in the comments, the first one that I see, I'm gonna go ahead and send a surprise prize package to in the mails. It works, that's what I wanted to document. Now what I'm interested in is if I go back over to CD mode, can I record from CD onto the SD card? So let's try that next. So I'm switching mode and it's loading the disc. So far I'm thinking that the DAC must suck on this, if I hit it once, what happens? Okay, I hit record once, and it stopped it. If I press and hold, maybe? No. If I tap? Let's look at the remote. You know, basic functionality, EQ, et cetera, et cetera. I don't think we can even record from the remote. So the recording capability. Okay, I hit it again and it started, so I assume we're recording. So anyway, I think the DAC might just be a really cheap DAC because the sound quality on both the SD card and the CD are just pretty horrendous. It sounds super compressed, not good at all. And this is an analog output, so this thing must just have super cheapo DAC in it is what I'm guessing. Now, when I was reading this, hit stop again. When I was researching this, Oops, I'm just gonna stop now. They said that this was sort of an entry level one, but it had a lot of features. So that was interesting. Oh yeah, yeah, one other thing I wanna try. Let's try hitting play again on the disc. Can I instantly go to track four, two, three? No. So I thought this would take us instantly to those tracks, but it's not doing that. If I go back over to the SD card now, will it play what we just recorded, I wonder? So there's the SD card. Now it has 80 tracks, so I'm thinking yes. Let's go. Yeah. It did record. So you can record. Ooh, that sounds even worse. Yikes. Okay, I gotta hook this up to a computer. I wanna see how bad this file, or how low grade the quality is on, of the file itself. That was really interesting. It's actually 128K MP3. That was pretty much what I expected. What I wasn't expecting is the sound quality of the recorded file is better than what we were hearing here in the room. In fact, take a listen. So what I wanna do real quick, just as sort of a sanity test, is I want to take out this Reader's Digest uh, disc, which I believe is a good quality recording, and I just want to put in a CD that I am more familiar with, one that I know sounds fantastic. This is a Debussy. And let's go ahead and load it up. Come on. Oh, it's on the wrong input. Switching over to the slow, slowest loading CD player of all time. Let's give this a listen. And I'm sure we would have gotten the same results on the USB that we did on the SD, but. Terrible, listen to that compression. And if I skip forward, let's try a couple different. Hear that artifacting? Interesting. So yeah, the DAC in this is poor, poor quality. Probably the worst DAC I've ever heard. Very interesting. Okay, so now for the grand finale, what we're going to do is find out whether or not this thing will play region two discs 
PAL region two disks, et cetera, et cetera. So let me get configured for that test and we'll see what happens. And for this test, I'm gonna be using this little clear click uh, video unit. This is actually designed to ingest analog video and digital video onto SD cards or through a USB connection digitally onto like an external hard drive, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. However, it also happens to be a super handy dandy little video monitor and runs on just a five volt uh, USB there. So I really want to watch this movie. If you are in the United States, there's almost no way that you can see this movie. This is a vehicle for status quo. And, you know, I've grown to really love these guys. A number of you guys have, you know, educated me about this, but no, no more so than my friend Adrian, who really got me hooked on these and have sent me records, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm not a rock and roll person by any means, but I've really grown to love this band. So on the back there, you can see Universal Studios, uh, 2 plus 4 PAL, uh, a bunch of uh, regional symbols, regulatory stuff that I'm not aware of. It is a DVD formatted disc, but this is not going to be a Region 1 disc, unlike the ones I can play. So I really hope that it works. I really, really do. Here's the disc itself. So you can't watch it on streaming. You can't, you know, buy it on YouTube. There's no way that you can watch this movie unless you have a physical disc and a physical player. So without further ado, is that signal coming from this? Let's turn this on and off and see. It is. Okay, so we got connectivity. Oops. Because I just ruined it all. Let me open this again. Okay, yeah, Karaoke USA. That's the disc. So here we go. Moment of truth. I really hope this works. Otherwise, my search for a Region 2 DVD player continues. Watch what happens when I put the disc in. You can see it's trying to read, so I'm getting hopeful. I'm getting excited. Maybe we can possibly watch this disc. Maybe, hopefully. Wrong region. So it's region coding after all. Dang it. So apparently this isn't that old. This company I think still exists. There, I didn't see any of them available for sale on Amazon. I think you can go on eBay though, if you want to snag one. Again, an interesting item and you never know what you're going to find in the thrift store. This is definitely in the category of things I didn't know existed, you know, before I walked in that day and saw it laying there and I was like, okay. But it kind of fit the bill for what I was looking for. And it was a very interesting thing to check out. So I hope you thought the same as well. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already, so you don't miss out on all the extra fun stuff we do. Consider joining the Vinyl Nation so you can get an extra show every week. It costs not that much at all, and you get an extra show a week, other benefits. It's a lot of fun, and we would love to have you over there as well. We've got dozens, maybe even hundreds of shows at this point. I would say dozens. I've been doing it since September, one show a week. Yeah, there's dozens of shows available that you can only see if you're a member of the nation. But my friends, that is going to do it for today. So let me say this, happy record hunting, and we'll see you next time.